Hey friends, it's me, I'm back, and I have a brand new video coming up for you with all the details about a certain appearance that was made in Utah by Ruby Frankie and her best friend therapist, Jody Hildebrandt, which created, started off quite chaotic due to some technical difficulties. I have some more details about what's going on with what the status is, will they ever be left out, let out, and what Ruby, told a judge yesterday in a civil case related to her kids. Let's get going. Hey friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It is Friday, September 8th, 2023. I'm back. I have been off camera for months. I don't even know how to do this. And if I somehow am looking all over the place, it's because I need to retrain my eyes on how to look at the camera. So today was a busy day and Ruby Frankie, along with Jody Hildebrandt, appeared in St. George, in Washington County Court for their first appearance. The, the hearing was set to start at 1.30 p.m. and unfortunately it got delayed for almost 45 minutes due to technical dish difficulties. There was so many people, literally so many people on the WebEx that they were having a hard time streaming it. They were also having a hard time getting people on it that needed to be on it. At one point in time, they said that Ruby might not even make an appearance that day, but lo and behold, she did make an appearance. And in instead of having other cases go before her and due to the demands that all of the people like media and fans that were interested in hearing and seeing uh, Ruby and Jody for the first time since, they're, since they were picked up last week on August 30th, uh, they did Ruby first and then they did Jody. So when Ruby and Jody were placed in Ute in Washington County detention, they were placed without bond. And there had been a lot of concern by people online that for some reason she might be released today on conditions. A public safety form had been filed before a judge had order her, ordered her held without bond. And According to Judge Eric Gentry, who presided over today's arraignment, he decided that he would stay with the judge's order in the previous court. So the current situation for Jody and for Ruby is that they remain held without bond. Now, Ruby only answered her first name and whether or not she had received the papers from her attorneys. They waived the reading of the indictment and then Jody came on and it was very similar. They asked Jody her name and they asked her if she was aware of everything that she had been charged with and then her attorneys waived their reading of the indictment. And most people don't have their indictments read in open court simply because it's very legalese and most people that come into the court already know what they've been charged with. So Ruby was in a yellow and white jumpsuit. Her hair was down and wavy. She had no makeup on and she looked, I would say she looked stoic. For Jody's part, she was wearing a pink or like orange and white jumpsuit. She actually looked very annoyed while she was sitting there. The picture that was grabbed by KUTV shows her sort of looking up and watching the judge speak to her while she was in a holding cell in Washington County's transfer center for arraignments. So according to the hearing, Jody's attorneys claimed that they needed an expedited hearing for her because they want her out. She wants to be released. The judge set, the, set their next appearance for a status hearing of September 21st at 9, 10 a.m. 2023. Jody is asking for the court to move this up and have a hearing for her release. And in a motion that she just filed in Washington County Court, her, her attorneys are claiming that she had to be hospitalized in the past week for several days and that she has developed an unknown and undisclosed life-threatening medical issue. I don't know what it is, they did not specify, but it says, since being incarcerated in this case, defendant has experienced a life-threatening medical issue resulting in her hospitalization for several days. 
They went on to say, due to the judicial conference, the court's law and motion calendar on September 14th, 2023 has been vacated. Counsel for defendant respectfully requests a special setting for the court to hear issue of defendant's detention. So they are going to try to get her released on bond, which at this point, I think it would be a break, a high burden for her to climb. I don't know if it's gonna happen. I, you know, I thought Josh Duggar wasn't gonna get released, but in this case, the, the situation actually involves like hands-on offenses and there was significant issues that RF experienced as a result of what Jody and Ruby did to him. And so, it's interesting that she would flip this and say, I've experienced something that has put me and my life in peril, where in truth, it was the young boy that was actually had his life put in peril by his mom and his therapist, allegedly. I was unable to see if a lot of family members were in the arraignment. I did notice that Chad Frankie was sitting there watching from, a, from WebEx uh, finding, watching his mother's arraignment. The family has been completely quiet since uh, Kevin's attorneys appeared on Good Morning America along News Nation Now. And now her attorneys have a completely different stance in that they're not going to be making any more com comments. The good news is that they're continuing to be held without bond and Ruby's attorneys also said they would be filing a motion for a detention hearing as well. Under the law, any person that's been held without bond can request a detention hearing and then it goes up to the judge to decide is this person safe would they pose a uh, danger to the community or to the individuals that have been hurt by what they're charged with would they potentially flee according to the first judge they believed and deemed them flight risks and deemed them a threat to the people involved in this case so i don't see how that would change but i'm not a judge in this case so over on the civil side of things, the Daily Mail showed up at a court appearance for Ruby and Kevin in the, in the custody of their children. And last week, all four minor children were removed by the state. And at the hearing, apparently Ruby went off the deep end and made all kinds of horrific allegations against her son. Well, I can only assume it's her son because it didn't make sense to me about it who would be anyone else but him since he was the one that was the most targeted by her. According to the Daily Mail, she has accused her own son of SA, of his siblings, of cousins, and of neighbors, and being so prolific in it that he has more than 20 people he's done this to. In addition, she accused her own child of looking at adult content at three years old. I can't even level to you how asinine these allegations are. And even if any of this were true, and I don't believe any of it is true, it doesn't explain nor justify what happened to her son and her daughter. She also claimed that her son and daughter then became like, they started doing this to other kids. So first he did it to his sister and then they went on and did it to other children. And then there was some rando woman her attorney stood up and said that they had testimony and they claimed that they had been hurt by our, by the child. The judge in this case basically just decided that it was clear that this child needed, needed to be placed in a home without other children, probably more for his safety from his malignant narcissist mother and the sociopathic Jody Hildebrandt than the allegations of what she claimed in court. It seems like what I'm hearing is that Jody has this propensity to assign really catastrophic charges and allegations against people. And one of her most famous thing to tell people and plant in their heads is that they have done something horrible to the people that they, to people in their lives. So she has been notorious for having planting ideas in wives' heads. According to court records, according to an investigation by Dopal, she, has been accused by multiple men of having their wives accuse them of SA uh, and then filing orders of protection, trying to file charges against them only to have the charges be dropped because there's no evidence and it's not true. And she seems to assign these types of charges to anyone that she deems to be someone she doesn't like. So say a guy decides he doesn't want to do her therapy anymore. Well, then she's going to make him into a villain. And that's kind of what I understand has happened to Kevin and other husbands that have been divorced. A lot of men have ended up in divorces because of Jody's counseling. 
And now she's apparently planting these ideas into the, the, the mind of the 12 year old because Ruby is adamant that this son of hers or this child of hers confessed to doing this to more than 20 people in May. I find that an interesting timeline given that Ruby has been left this child alone for months, weeks at end in the fall of 2022. And if this person was so concerned about the safety of their children, why on earth would she have left this child alone with his siblings? How would a three-year-old get access to adult content given how incredibly controlling and manipulative Ruby is? A three-year-old, really? I feel like for Ruby, adult content could have been like he literally saw a Victoria's Secret ad that his dad had sitting on the coffee table. Now, don't get me wrong, we always wanna believe people that have been harmed, but given Jody's propensity to do this to people and to weaponize these types of charges against those that she doesn't like, it doesn't seem to be any, there doesn't seem to be any credibility. And the Daily Mail had said basically that there was no proof. She provided no proof. She was like rambling and sort of out of control while she was saying all these sobbing, crying. Kevin didn't say a word. The judge didn't say a word. Apparently Jody and Kevin have the same attorney for the civil case for the kids, but which I think is weird. Like, why would you have the same person representing both of you? Um, her two older daughters were there. They were represented by st attorneys. The state was there. And at this point, the kids don't, the kids remain outside the custody of the family. There's no details about where, they, where they've gone, but at this point, Kevin does not have them. Family does not have them. They are in protective custody. It's pretty sick that what, what I'm seeing here is a narcissist, Jody, using her, I'm being... Um, I'm the victim in jail, which is actually the exact thing that she preaches against. She always says, don't be in victim. Well, now she's being in victim. She's clearly acting out in her distortion and she's not being humble, nor is she being honest. So victim is a word that many of us use to acknowledge when a person is using their choices to not be responsible for themselves. You might think responsible. What exactly am I responsible for? Let's start at the beginning when you were born. When it comes to Ruby, I would also say she's not being humble, nor is she being honest. And say all of these allegations were true. Why then would you not go to the proper authorities? Why then would you handle it in-house? Are you trying to be like the next Jim Bob Duggar with Josh? We already saw how that went. I don't believe there's any credibility here because there would be a paper trail. There would be court records. There would be a police report. And there's nothing, none of that, nor if this were true, why would you have the same person, the same child with other kids in the same house with them during this Something. entire time? Mm -hmm. Because this is serious. I want you to know how badly I feel about the choices that I've made. That when would be- They were at, when they made contact with RF last week, he was in the same home as his sister that was 10. And his other sisters who were staring at another house had been seen at the same house as well. There hadn't been a separation of the kids. So I don't believe for a minute there's any credibility here. I just think it's really disgusting that a mother would try to throw their own child under the bus as sort of a means of a justification saying, see, we had to do this to him. I, I could be dishonest and I think I'm getting away with it nobody because knows. nobody knows. Mm -hmm. It might be five years, 10 years. I might, I might even take it to the grave with me. My, my dirty little this secret to him so, so it, it, this was our uh, we had to drive the evil out of him we had to get those sat satanic forces that were making him download and and watch all this content online and doing all these terrible things to children and all of these kids that he's harmed the weird thing here guys is that not a single neighbor that she claims has been hurt by him has said a word publicly so i won't trust myself and you should not trust me either because I don't have any problem lying to you. I don't have any problem dropping responsibility, which is also deception. And so it's, it's wild. It's just another trying to change the narrative. So what I'm happy about today is that Ruby is going to be continued to be held without bond. What I'm happy about today is that Jody continues to be held without bond and what I want you to do, if you haven't yet watched, is there was an amazing interview yesterday. It was done by John DeLynn on Mormon Stories Podcasts. I do not care what you think about Mormon Stories Podcasts, whether you like them or don't like them, whether you believe 
they're they're heretics or they're doing terrible things to the Mormon church, that doesn't matter. What matters is that Jesse Hildebrandt, the niece who is non-binary and goes by the pronouns they, them, gave an interview to John. They lived with Jody. The exact same things that happened to RF happened to them. Duct tape being forced to sleep on balconies, running sprints in the middle of the night, being bound, being detained, all of it. The same things happened to them. And their parents placed them with Jody in response to them running away and being an angry teenager. Jody, they, they attempted to contact the police. The police did nothing. The way and the, the amounts of, it's eerie how similar it, it is. And the way that they described Jody, they said that Jody completely and wholly believes their delusions, her delusions. They said Jody believes that they get right, she gets revelations from God and that she gets visions and dreams and that she decides that people have done things even if they haven't done things. So they said that she, Jesse said that one day Ruby told them that they were a drug addict, addicted to alcohol addicted to looking at adult content online and accuse them of SA. They said it was ridiculous because at the time they were 16 years old and had nothing and did nothing more than kiss anyone. And they certainly didn't have a problem with looking at content, nor did they know that they could do that. And they had, were basically describing themselves as a good Mormon kid. Like that was handing out books of Mormon and trying to recruit people for the church. If you watch the interview, you will see how eerie and how similar the cases are. My hope is that this could have potentially get their case against uh, or investigation into Jody reopened. If nothing else, I hope they could potentially be a witness for the prosecution because seriously, what they shared is like identical to what happened to RF. So there's another channel, I think Hidden Crimes, they interviewed Adam Steed. Adam Steed also spoke to People Magazine speaking out about what Jody did. And if you haven't heard the interview with Adam Steed on the podcast Hidden Crime, you should watch that because he explains how Jody levels these types of allegations against people, smears them, ruins their reputation, attempts to re like diminish their credibility and puts things onto other people that are simply not true. Forcing these people to have to defend themselves off baseless allegations, getting them into court cases, ruining their lives financially, destroying them in the community. And it seems like Jody and has now taken all of these steps applied it to Ruby, applied it to RF, and now they're going to try to ruin RF's life. It's absolutely disgusting. So that's all I have for now on this video. If you have or are someone that's been affected by Jody or been affected by Judy or Jody or Ruby, if you are in the Moms of Truth Facebook page, if you were part of Moms of Truth, if you are coming out of this and you feel like you have a story to tell, make sure to send me an email at tips at withoutacrystalball.com. You can also check me out on Facebook at Facebook slash withoutacrystalball. Make sure to uh, check me out on Instagram at withoutacrystalball.com. And as always, if you haven't liked this video, make sure you do. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to click on the subscription button down below. Make sure to click on those bells. I want to hear everything that you have to say, so please leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.